So, as I said when I started this series, I've been telling the stories in a chronological order. So I'm starting with the ones in high school, since that's when the majority of the stuff started happening. But there's one that I actually forgot to tell that happened when I was a little kid. So, I have a little brother who is two years younger than myself. At the time, I was eight years old, so he would have been about six years old. Now, we lived in this little town called Gold Hill, and we lived on this little street called Sarding Creek which was way out in the boonies. I mean, I guess it's not too far out, but for the average city goer, it is pretty far out. And there was a little creek that passed down by our house. We had two large fields. I think the thing was probably like an acre and a half. Um, I mean, at least the property that we rented was about that large. Now, out in this area, there's a lot of wildlife. You'll have bears running around every so often, raccoons, deer, cougars, turkeys, and they're all over the place. And generally, you don't see kind of the bigger uh, carnivorous animals out there. Mostly, you see deer and turkey. But either way, one day, myself and my six-year-old little brother were playing around our, our little sandbox area. We had a swing set, we had a sandbox, and we would just go in there and have ourselves a good time, build little castles and whatever. I think the most annoying thing about having a sandbox out in the woods is little animals will jump into it and poop in there, which makes sense. But, I mean, whatever, free treats, right? So, we, we were always fed. So this one day, we're sitting there playing in the sandbox, and we start to hear this noise coming from down by the creek. And it sounds like kittens meowing. Now, when David and I heard this, we were sitting there thinking the worst, like, oh my god, someone just had a litter of kittens, doesn't want them, threw them in a box, and just pushed them down into the creek to hope that they died. Maybe some wild animal will come and kill them, right? And being little kids, David and I were not going to let that happen. That was the first thing our minds went to. So, as we're sitting there walking towards the creek, I stop for a minute because I remember, actually, there are wild animals out here, and those little kittens don't necessarily have to be domestic kittens. Those could be the offspring of a mountain lion. Now, as soon as that hit me, I started getting scared. And I was like, uh, David, actually, hang on a minute. Think about this for a second. What if those are mountain lion cubs? And David said, well, if they are mountain lion cubs, and by the way, my God, six-year-old logic is just infallible. This is what he says. He goes, if they are mountain lion cubs, then I'll just walk away. And I'm like, yeah, Dev, okay, but it doesn't work that way, okay? If they're mountain lion cubs, it means the mom or the dad is probably not too far away. And if they're hunting right now, we're, we're prey. They're going to kill us. And he said, no, no, if I get too close, the mom will know that I don't want to do its kitten's harm, and I'll just walk away. And I'm like, David, no, that is not how that works, okay? We're not in a cartoon, okay? These things will kill us instantly, okay? We're a six and an eight-year-old kid. So I couldn't get through to him. His his head was so thick, I, I literally was getting angry. And I was like, you just die then, you know? Like, die, you know? I was pissed, but I didn't want to leave him because he's my little brother. So I'm walking behind him, just trying. David, please, stop, stop. And he won't. He will not listen to me. I was going to go, like, beat the shit out of him. But the only thing was, if I walk up or I run up, and now I startle whatever is behind these bushes, you know, and it thinks I'm running up at them. God damn it. Like, so I'm in the worst possible situation here. Rock in a hard place for sure. So I'm, I'm walking behind my brother as he marches forward towards the bushes that lead to the creek. And we did not get maybe five feet in front of these bushes before we hear a full grown mountain lion roar. Now, this was probably not the smartest move, but this was just impulse. David and I jumped up and sprinted back towards our house. We sprint past our house and ran all the way to the neighbor's house. We sat there at the neighbor's door just cowering like, oh my God, oh my God, we're shaking. Oh Jesus, oh my God. We were scared out of our little minds. And this was terrible because I was, I was angry at my brother. I was like, you could have just gotten us killed. Okay, because you wouldn't listen to me. The fact is, those are probably not kittens, Dev. Either way, after we shook for a little bit, we ran back to our house and ran into the front door and we told our father, Dad, Dad, there are mountain lions in the area. And he said, where? How do you know? And we told him the story. So he gets up and he grabs a gun and he walks outside. He goes, stay inside. And so we did. We just kind of, you know, did what our father told us to do. And he walks out and he's gone for maybe... Man, I don't really even remember. I was eight years old, but it felt like a long time for me. You know, like kid minutes are just centuries. 
But either way, he comes back and he says, there's nothing out there. Uh, I didn't find a single thing. I didn't even see tracks. So um, what I'm thinking happened was this little unit of mountain lions had just been passing through. And thank God the mountain lions were probably not out hunting. Um, they seem to be more interested in protecting their cubs or maybe getting back to wherever den they were hiding in. So when we jumped and ran away, they probably did the same thing. They just got their cubs out of danger. And so they took off. So, and I, I cannot tell you how lucky that is because, my God, if that thing decided it wanted to kill us, it was hungry, it wanted to feed its cubs or it wanted to protect its cubs, we wouldn't have even seen it coming. We would have just been dead. You know, turning and sprinting the opposite direction, that is literally calling a cat to come kill you. I swear to God, if you've ever owned a cat and you run and, and rile it up and then run in the opposite direction, you're screwed. So, I don't know what happened. I don't know why it didn't kill us, but thank God it didn't. And that is easily one of the most terrifying stories. Uh, probably one of the most terrifying and closest to death encounters I've ever been in.